right. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our monthly entrepreneur coffee break. My name is Carol Spicer, and I'm the owner of Spicer Facilitation. I'm very happy to have you joining us today. For those that are just uh, coming in, you'll see in chat that a few people are saying good morning. I encourage you all to pop your information over in chat, let folks know who you are, and perhaps let us know where you're joining from today. Um, it's one of the quirky things that I really like to see how far our reach is, um, and, and I love the fact that we reach out virtually to a number of different communities. I'm joining you from the beautiful community of Pasadena, and I do want to take a moment to acknowledge that it's in the unceded territory of the ancient Beothic. And I ask that you join me in acknowledging with respect the diverse traditions and cultures of all Indigenous people in our country, and those especially in our province, which are the Beothic, the Innu, the Southern Labrador Inuit, and the Inuit of Labrador, and also those that are self-identified uh, as Indigenous. We uh, welcome all folks, and I think about where you're joining us in this diverse province of ours. Also, I'd like to say Gwe, bonjour à tous, hello, and welcome to everyone today. Um, very excited to continue offering uh, our entrepreneur coffee break. I'll give you a little bit of a background for those that may not um, be 100% familiar with what it is. I know we do have some folks joining us for the first story. time. And the entrepreneur coffee break is your community. It's an opportunity that we uh, provide to the entrepreneur Sorry, ecosystem. Entrepreneur ecosystem. Uh, Carol, uh, can Carol, you just can mute you up? Just mute I'm, up? Getting, I'm a loop getting a loop around. around. Sorry. Your... That's okay. That's okay. I'm not as familiar with this um, platform. I'm just trying to find where my uh, where my mute button is. Should see, an, see icon an icon with Cameron, with Cameron Mike. and Mike. Oh, there you go. Perfect. Thanks, Carol. Um, so for those that may not be familiar, the Entrepreneur Coffee Break started as a pilot project in January 2020 for three months. Uh, we did January, February, and March of 2020. I think everyone knows what happened in March 2020. So our pilot continued. Um, and I was in partnership with Navigate Small Business at that time. And we ran the Coffee Break uh, steady for two years. And then uh, there was a shift in the summer in, uh, in 2022 for some of their programming and different things that they were doing. So we've kind of, we're still in a partnership, but they're no longer sponsoring each and every month. Um, we are now looking at different sponsors each month. And sometimes I sponsor it myself uh, as an opportunity to bring the community together. So this is your community as those in the entrepreneur ecosystem, uh, people who are business owners, people who support business owners, uh, people who share information with business owners, uh, and we're growing and growing. So the first couple, January 2020, I think we had three people. Uh, we have 32 people registered for today. So the community has grown, and uh, we're very pleased to continue to offer that. So a uh, little bit of how today is going to work. Um, very happy to see all of you chatting and in, in giving information in chat, which is perfect. I do do a follow-up email, so I'll be sharing the information uh, of who attended. Uh, but we're going to do a little bit of a welcome. Um, so this welcome that I'm doing, we have uh, Dr. Morteza Higari with us, uh, an economist with uh, Grenfell, who very gracious, graciously agreed to be our guest when someone else very willingly gave me his name to participate. Um, and so I reached out to him and he was very, um, very gracious to join us today. Um, and then after that, uh, after his discussion with us and we have a bit of a chat, um, then there's an opportunity for each of you to share who you are with the network. And so uh, there'll be an opportunity for you to promote your business or promote your organization um, and do a little bit of networking at the end. So that is sort of the, the structure for today. Um, my screen's gone a little blurry on this presentation. Someone just give me a nod. Is is the slide that you're currently seeing a bit blurry? No, it's looking good. Okay, all right, perfect. Looking good on this end. <laughs> that that's more important than on my end. Um, so Dr. Hagari is here. Uh, Morteza, you've been touted as an economist up at Grenfell. So I'm wondering if you want to do a little intro, let folks know who you are, and um, then we can take it from there. Uh, thank you very much, Carol, for giving me this opportunity. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, 
As Carol said, my name is Murtaza Hariri. 27 years ago, uh, on the 25th of March, 1997, uh, my wife and I came from Iran to Saskatoon. Uh, so I can do my PhD in, um, in economics in the uh, University of Saskatchewan. Uh, 25th of March is fifth day of the spring. So we, we are all wearing a short sleeve type of jackets and, uh, and also a, a polo t-shirt. So we came to Saskatoon. The moment that the flight crew opened the door, I saw the pile of snow in, uh, in, at the airport in, in, in Saskatoon. So I told the flight crew, are we in North Pole? <laughs> and then, the, and then the, she said, no, welcome to the um, province of Saskatchewan. Anyway, <laughs> I, we did survive seven years. And in, 19, um, in 2003, I came to Mount Allison University in New Brunswick, in Sackville. And uh, for just a one year um, uh, uh, regular term appointment, and it led to now we have been residing in uh, Moncton for more than 22 years. And uh, because I, I was hired by Grenfell Campus of Memorial University in 2006, uh, I am just like a, a, a antibiotic tablet every two, three weeks. I am commuting between Newfoundland and New Brunswick. I have my own flight crew and uh, and the security at the airport in Deer Lake, they all know me. The moment that they see me, they would be that anything. They would say, okay, you again, go pass, pass, pass. <laughs> that is how my life is going on. And as of um, April of, um, 18 of April of uh, last year, I was fortunate enough, not fortunate enough because the foreman Dean left, fortunate enough because um, I, I was able to sleep before um, April 18 for at least eight hours without any worry about anything. Now, after 18th of April, now I am in the position of interim dean of uh, science and the environment. I could barely sleep for four hours per night, all <laughs> thinking about everything that uh, we have here. And then uh, when Carol uh, talked to me regarding of this session, I was very happy and at the same time, I had a very small chat with Dr. Newell who introduced me to, <laughs> to, to Karen about that. Um, before I start my lecture, which I divided into two topics of um, domestic economy and international economy, uh, I would like to say that my view is personal and does not reflect Grenfell Campus or Memorial University view on anything that I would say. So uh, it's all everything on me uh, and also I am not in favor of any political uh, parties. Uh, they all very respected uh, to me. I know how it is difficult to be a public servant nowadays, especially in this type of economy. But um, I, I am not red or green or blue or yellow or white or whatever they call themselves by, by the color of their party. So it's all, um, all talk, when, talk about the fact the fact and the statistics that we have in uh, in economy. Uh, regarding of domestic economy, uh, we are right now in a kind of situation that we call uh, a stagflation, which is a combination of two words, the stagnation and inflation, which means we are not only at recession, but we all, every day we see that the price of goods and services are going up uh, and that is, um, uh, very difficult uh, on both sides of producers and also consumers. They are um, using uh, supply produced uh, by, by, by firm. The recession nowadays is different from the recession that we were on uh, back to eight years ago, nine years ago, uh, when the country uh, uh, used an expansionary fiscal policy in order to come up with the recession. Now they cannot do it. They cannot follow the expansionary fiscal policy, which means they are reducing their taxes or they increasing the government expenditure in order to get the wheel of the economy out of the recession. Because come, uh, on the contrary with seven, eight, eight years ago, now we have inflation too. So we have a combination of inflation and recession which puts government in a very, very difficult position because they cannot follow 
expansionary fiscal or monetary policy. That's why we see the governments uh, hesitate to uh, spend more than what they used to spend before. And also regarding of the taxes, they hesitate to bring the taxes down. And it affects small um, business owners. It affects uh, consumers on the other side. I just reading an article um, about two weeks ago in Ontario, um, uh, a consumer went into a Sobeys a grocery store and realized that the price of a family size of uh, um, Caesar salad is 40, about $42, exactly $41.66. Or on the other side, an, another uh, consumer uh, noted that uh, the skinless chicken breast in um, co in um, Dominion for a five breast is around thirty-seven dollars. We as Canadian, or at least you have, uh, you have more. Um, we call it. Uh, you have clothes more than mine because I just came nineteen ninety-seven to this country, uh, but you have been more than more than me here. They are living there. What was the last time that we saw a price of uh, Caesar salad for $42 for a family or a uh, chicken breast for $37? $37. That was not the case before. And that is, that is hurting. That is hurting consumer side on the other side, producer side too. We used to have a very, very small CPI, consumer price index. And CPI in macroeconomics is counted as a um, sign of inflation. I have some statistics for you to, to talk about. In uh, uh, 2000, 2020, just before COVID started, the CPI in Canada was 0.72. It's even less than 1%. Now, you want to have to know the CPI here. Now, it is 6.8%, which is huge uh, uh, increase compared to 2020. And it's only almost two years. And we are not even finished January of this year yet. So within the past two years, then uh, the consumer price index have gone up significantly. Something that I always told my student that when I came to Canada in 1997, the inflation rate was hovering around 2.5, 2.7%. Up to 2020, which is still the inflation rate was around that one. <laughs> I said, this is not an economy. This is an art. If you are keeping the prices for 25 years around 2 to 0.5, 6, 7 percent, that I call it art. It doesn't matter whether Liberal Party was in uh, governing or, or uh, Progressive Party was governing. Uh, or uh, NDP party and Green Party, they are arguing with each other uh, in the House of Commons in, in Ottawa uh, regarding all that. But no matter what, that is how well established the economy is. Now I cannot say it anymore. Now we have, although 6.8% is still good, but when we compare to uh, three years ago, four years ago, I am not going to say it anymore that this is art. This is something definitely that happened in happening. If in 1982, the inflation rate in Canada was 10.9%, it was because the uh, Iran's revolution in 1979, which drove the, the price of oil at least three times more than the quoted time on that time. So um, nowadays, uh, there is no specifically kind of war. But the cause of inflation in 2020 in Canada, in 2022 in Canada, is kind of negative supply shock. Uh, so that that that's hers. And I'm explaining why it is a negative supply shock a little bit more. Uh, regarding of unemployment in unemployment rate on average in Canada, we are doing fine. We are doing at the time that the country, the economy would say that we are at the normal rate of utilization. 5% uh, is, is on average, again, it's at the country level, is good. But when we are breaking down to the province, it's still our uh, beloved province, Newfoundland, is still on the top of the unemployment rate uh, among the other uh, provinces in Canada, much less among the other provinces in Atlantic Canada. Uh, we Right now, the unemployment rate in um, Newfoundland is about 9.5% which is higher than 6.2 of Nova Scotia, 6.7 of New Brunswick, 
and 8.3 on on our uh, PEI. So the lowest unemployment rate right now is in Saskatchewan and British Columbia with around uh, 4.1 to 4.3 percent. Other in macro index that I would like to mention is the ratio of uh, Canada debt to income. That is basically says on average, if a household earns $1, how much of that $1 they spend, whether it is less than or it is more than. Unfortunately, right now, the, debt, the ratio of Canada debt to income is around $1.83, which means for every dollar a Canadian earns, they spend $1.83 more than that. So that is a, a very, very a significant debt. And also, of course, part of this debt is the mortgage. And uh, it would have been nice if we see what Canada debt to income ratio is without, without mortgage. Prime rate is my next uh, uh, index that I am going to talk about. And that prime rate is highly directly impact our, our uh, colleagues or business um, uh, owners, especially small business owners. At the beginning of January of last year, a uh, prime rate was 2.45%. Uh, you know that prime rate is the kind of interest rate that uh, commercial banks are giving to the most credit worthy uh, clients of them, which is, the, which is the minimum type of interest rate that we can see um, compared to, uh, to the bank rate and overnight rate. We are not able to see bank rate or overnight rate. But what, what we can see or observe in them in our life is the, is the rate for the prime rate. January of 2022, it was 2.45. And in December, we had 6.45. And that is a 163% increase in the prime rate. What does it mean to us? It means now the cost of borrowing money from commercial banks have gone up uh, about 4% compared to what we paid in the beginning of 2022. Now, this affects our mortgage rate. This affects of any kind of loan that we are going to get from commercial banks in order to expand our business. And in this case, it will add some extra cost to us regarding of, uh, of this kind of payment. It also affects consumers on the other side because consumers used to uh, get loan from the commercial banks in order to, let's say, renovation, in order to some uh, family trip, family business, any kind, of, any kind of expenditures out of regular expenditures that they have. They used to do it. They used to go to the bank and banks would open their, heart, uh, open their arms and then most of the time approve their applications. Now it is on the other side. It is completely reversed. And on, from one side, banks very, very picky on new applications. They have to have some kind of, of uh, legal documents in order to make sure that the, the loan that they are providing to their clients are not going to be default. And in this case, when, when uh, families are see that they, they decline their, let's say, vacation trips, they decline or they reduce the type of over extra expending that they used to have. And, um, and that, is the, that is a very, very uh, difficult case on the shoulder of business owners. Tomorrow is that another date in 2023 that Bank of Canada is going to revise uh, prime rate. Well, they are going to revise overnight rate, which is affect bank rate, which is affect prime rate. If we are lucky, they do not touch it. They just say something like that to say they said. But rumors are saying that they are going to add 0.25 basis points in addition to 6.45. But let's say wake up tomorrow, 10 o'clock Eastern time to see whether, um, whether they are right or, or the rumor is right or not. Overall, the economy outlook is not good. I am, I am a type of person that I will always look at to the half of the 
full part of the glass of water, not the half empty. But the situation right now is somehow that um, I remind uh, one of my friends who always have two, glass of, two glasses in front of him on the table, one full of water, one no water or not. And then when I, when I asked him, what is the two for? And then he said, I pick up the, the glass of, with water when I am thirsty. And if I pick up the glass of water when I am not thirsty, with which there is no water on it. So the situation is just like that. I am hoping that nothing happens tomorrow for the sake of most of you who are uh, small business owners, but we wait and wait and have to see about that. My other part of the my other part of the speech is about the international economy. We're moving from domestic economy to international economy, something that we have seen a substantial uh, change from 2019, especially. I classify five reasons that caused uh, the current turmoil in economics in Canada and most the rest of the world. The big one is uh, pandemic, pandemic COVID-2019. It affects supply chain, it affects uh, producers, and uh, it basically affects everything. Uh, uh, supply chain in the second one, uh, particularly in the case of transistor and, and type of um, uh, industry uh, that makes uh, halted on, on the current production. Uh, competition between the United States and China is, has always been the controversial issue in the world. It is right now more, ten, uh, more intense. And I have a very, very uh, famous expression saying that because the US economy is big, if the US economy sneezes, we all get fever. And that's how it, and we means Canada and also the rest of the world too. So that's another issue. Brexit, which means the uh, exit of England from the European Union, to me is another uh, problem that we have uh, 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 that caused a turmoil in economy. And unfortunate, 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 the recent event happens in between Russia and, and Ukraine. Uh, it looks like it looks like a weapon factory in the world must be working. Sometimes between Iran and Iraq, sometimes between Pakistan and India, sometimes between Kashmir, sometimes between different countries, and now between Russia and Ukraine. I am very hoping that uh, for the sake of both sides, Russian soldiers also have families, also have fathers, mothers, husband, wife, children. For both sides, I am hoping that this nonsense uh, uh, event that is right now happening um, in, in the other part of the world will stop. Um, one thing we, I noticed that is that Canada has always been uh, the supporter of free trade, especially when NAFTA is in effect and there was an agreement with the United States and Mexico. But right now, the idea of free trade to me has been diminishing, has been demolishing. Right now, we have two types of, of a group. One is the United States and G7 and the other part is Russia and China. So they all make their, um, the free movement of labor and inputs and everything among each other, but not between these two groups. So it looks like that we have two kinds of umbrellas, one umbrella covering United States and allies, and the other one, other one, other umbrella is covering the economy of Russia, China, and any other countries who are against the Western politicians, Western society, and they were just because they cannot survive uh, autonomy. Uh, so they will go from the West, they will go to the East, and they are giving their, their economy to China and also to the East. Uh, by East, I mean uh, Russia. Uh, I will have some uh, um, items um, as an outline to let you know that uh, what we should be doing as a small business owners, what would be done in order to get our business going on. My first um, 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 impression is that know your numbers, know about your cost of production, cost of operations, know about 
the uh, kind of prices that you are uh, facing with, know about the type of market that your business is on, or how many rivals your business um, um, nature of the business you have in, in this kind of uh, economy. Uh, know about the uh, market concentration ratio, which means how many big firms you have in front of you that they are working on, on the same industry that you are working and in what capacity they have the share of the market. Let's just call it concentration ratio. Uh, uh, try as much as you can to bring your production cost and operation cost down in order to at least survive through this uh, tough economy. Find new marketing strategy. Uh, if your business is somehow that you are able to have more direct to sell or direct to consumer sell, expand that instead of just having a new order store, expand it through the method of um, establishing new markets, non-price marketing type of a strategy in order to, to be survived. Uh, establish new market for your business, whatever new market is regarding of targeting new section of the market, segment of the consumers. Uh, then establishing a system of price discrimination by bundling by non-market price strategy, by charging different prices to different people. But be careful, you cannot advertise saying that I am running my business on a base of uh, price discrimination policy because this is against the law and you cannot do it. However, you could bundle your service, you could bundle your business with other things and that is indirectly you are using a second degree price discrimination by doing that. And also social media. Use social media as much as you can. Nowadays, people are not or do not have time to read newspaper. What was the last time that you read newspaper? Is there any newspaper right now available? We had one newspaper in uh, Korebrook that has been shut down a while ago. So it's all right now based on social media, um, all kinds of that. So try to use this in order to advertise for the business that, that you are running. Uh, I was told that should be between 10 to 15 minutes. I am hoping that I consider the quoted time between 10 to 15 minutes. That's all I wanted to say about, about um, my view on the current situation of the economy in Canada. And one more thing, we are in our neighborhood, 80 kilometers far from Corner Road and 130 kilometers far from you. There is something going to be on in, in the city or in the town of uh, Stevenville regarding of the new projects that are coming, bringing by German country in order to produce a green a hydrogen and then liquid it to ammonium and then ship it to, um, ship it to, uh, to Hamburg uh, port in Germany. That means we are looking at at least six to 8,000 uh, uh, kind of job and, and also kind of a family be added to, to this area. Whether we like it or we don't like it, we are gonna be affected. We are hoping that it, could, it will be affected in a positive way. It will be an external, a positive externality to most of you whose business are in corner or in Cornerbrook or in or in Pasadena or in Deer Lake, because we are going to see an increase in demand for education, an increase in demand for healthcare, an increase in demand for transportation, an increase in demand for hospitality uh, section like hotels, uh, restaurants, uh, type of, that type of thing, and mostly um, an increase in demand for housing. The town of Stevenville approached to us regarding of helping them. And my colleagues at the Grenfell campus, they welcomed them, they opened their arms and they said, let us know how can we help? We are just talented people, researchers who are 
providing this kind of service for you. And we are in talk with the mayor and the chief town officer, I believe they call it, uh, in, in, in a Stephenville. We already have one face-to-face um, um, -face meeting with them in Cornerbrook, and we are gonna have a, a following meetings with them. Uh, all we, we are going to do is just be there for them and do whatever they want, but that is them who should let us know. No matter how they are gonna execute this kind of different projects that they have, uh, it will affect the community. It will affect the community for sure. If I am saying that Stephenville and the suburb is gonna be a second Fort McMurray in Canada, if they are gonna get all these projects right, and if all these projects that they are talking about is coming into action, then the idea of having a second Fort McMurray in Canada would not be um, an ideal case. It would be definitely happening. Now, in what a scale, we have to wait and see how, how it, it works. But it's definitely, it is gonna be happening in 2023, and it's gonna be a, like a continuous type of, continuous type of business that we are gonna have. I'm sure you all remember that about um, three, four months ago, uh, the chancellor of Germany with the prime minister um, um, Trudeau, they came to Stephenville and they signed the contract of bringing, uh, using the mill, uh, the windmill, um, uh, and then in order to make that type of thing. But we have to be prepared. Uh, the economy has to be prepared. The province have to, has to be prepared and mostly the provincial government also have to put aside their interests regarding of uh, uh, red color or, or blue color or green color or orange color, orange color, working together in order to um, um, have a development in the economy of the province, mostly of the west part of the province. Thank you very much for listening to my, to my talk. Um, uh, that's all. That's awesome. Thank you so very, very much. There's a lot there to unpack. Um, I'm just thinking we have uh, lenders on the on the call with us here today, and I'm sure they're quite interested in your perspective around the prime rate and what that has done and the uh, Canada debt to income one just kind of blew me away to think every dollar I earn, I'm spending almost twice that at $1.83. That's that's kind of crazy. Um, I have my two realtors online who must have coordinated today because they're looking very similar in what their outfits are. Um, but I'm sure that they are uh, both, you know, thinking about the the housing out in, in Stephenville area and, of course, the lending rate uh, to, to those of us purchasing homes. Michelle's here with New Canadians trying to get people into our economy and into housing and, and everything else. So um, and then there's all of us as business owners. Um, I'm just looking at this thinking if 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 our debt to income is so high, we obviously don't have disposable income, uh, you know, as easily as we once did to go and and spend at our establishments uh, in the area. Um, that's just kind of what I took away just on the surface and some of the notes that I took here. But I'm going to open it up to the floor now and ask uh, participants if you have direct questions or comments that you'd like to jump into as well. I will ask you to use the raise hand function. Um, just to kind of keep it a little bit coordinated for me. Um, so up at the top, you'll see the raise hand. You can just click on that and then I'll uh, I'll uh, run down through and ask, ask open up your microphone so you can ask uh, Dr. Higagi uh, some some of his, uh, Higiri, sorry, his questions. Uh, so Janice, you're up first. I'll, uh, I'll go to you and then Carol next. Hi, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Morteza. That was really interesting. I apologize. My background is really, really bright. I'm back onto a window and I would just blind you all with light here and dear light today. Um, the question I have, and I am a business owner, small business owner. I don't sell a product. I sell services such as in the courier um, transportation field. And as well as of this past year, I now have uh, four government cleaning contracts. So my business is very people heavy, labor intensive. And I am sure that my struggle is the same as most business owners here, um, finding the labor market. And I, and I kind of chuckled when we talked about, you know, how Newfoundland and Labrador are at that higher level of 
unemployment rate. And I think to myself, where are they all to? Because <laughs> I'm struggling every day to find staff. Um, and I'm just wondering if you have any thoughts or, or uh, suggestions or insight on, on how us as business owners can and find staff and keep staff and staff is willing to, you know, do an honest day's work for an honest day pay. Uh, certainly, you are not alone. Um, well, first of all, this number of nine uh, percent as an unemployment rate is an overall in the industry, uh, uh, and uh, they are uh, measuring it by Statistics Canada and also provincial uh, provincial um, uh, ministry responsible for that. Uh, it, it the shortages of uh, of uh, uh, labor force is is not only to you it's not it's, it's all in in um, in in the country uh, we shut down the way that we used to hire um, a foreign uh, uh, labor uh, for a temporary even for a short season or for on a on a on a permanent type of things uh, because there were some uh, problems that were happen in 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 british columbia uh, so they revised the policy of the hiring uh, foreigners uh, and right now, uh, they are still doing it. They are they are they have very tight policy on uh, on inviting foreigners in order to do uh, uh, the job. Uh, that is the uh, uh, fishermen and and the fishing factories in um, New Brunswick is also they are dealing with problem. And I'm, I'm sure that we have some problems in the, in the province too. Uh, you just need to keep uh, you just need to keep uh, digging. And uh, try to use if there is any uh, part-time type of workers. Um, unfortunately, you you are in Deer Lake, and uh, it's far from uh, Corebrook, so it does not make sense for, for example, our students to come and work for for you in a in, in, in a work. But you just need to think about that. I, I this is a kind of macro policy that we have, and let me tell you this. If uh, this is happening, the uh, event in um, uh, Stephenville, if this is going to be happen, then you're going to see much more problem regarding of uh, labor because they probably uh, will be attracted over there. Uh, another kind of uh, uh, a problem that uh, that we are facing is the increasing uh, in the number of applications were rejected. Uh, by um, Immigration Canada, they, they have their own, uh, they have their own rural policy. It looks like the industry is not linked to the immigration needs. It means that there is not enough information passage on from the business owners from the industry to immigration in each province, and that caused the problem. If if we are able to solve that, then you probably would not have this kind of problem. Um, uh, that, that's very interesting because it was actually last night I thought to myself that I need to reach out to the folks within the province who are looking at the immigration of new people and say, listen, I need somebody for X, Y, Z. These, these are the skills I need. Can you help me connect them with them? So I, I was thinking about that on the other end, what you, you just mentioned there. Um, yeah. And the other thought I had last night, I'm glad to see them here today. Um, the Association of Canadians, I thought last night, I'm like, you know, and, and I will tell them I'm going to reach out to them as well in Cornerbrook. And as well, I noticed that there was an employment officer here with Halbu that I put a note down that I'd reach out to them as well. Maybe they could help. Um, and ironically enough, yes, I am in Deer Lake, but my courier runs between Cornerbrook and uh, Deer Lake every day. We have uh, most of our business customers are in Cornerbrook. And uh, three of my major buildings that we do the cleaning contract for the government are all in Cornerbrook. So I have a bit more of a mass population in Cornerbrook as well, which I guess those are some positives, I guess you could look at. So thank okay. you very much. You're hey, welcome. Carol, Carol, if I may, am I for me? Yeah, go ahead, uh, Also, a study in Stanell. There's a study in Stanell program with the with Mun University that I'm part of, and where we are, we work with international students. Uh, many of them are very educated. They're in the last year of education, however, but there is many, a uh, lot of the resources there that uh, I'm working with Hillary King that we're kind of putting together um, to help them find work here and hopefully stay in Newfoundland. So that's another area if you want to reach out to me as well. But study and stand out program is, I think it's in the second or third year now, and we really have, have a lot of momentum. So that might be able to help you as well. I appreciate that. Thank you. 
The other thing, Janice, we had a couple um, sessions ago, I think it was in October or November, uh, we had a labor market officer uh, come on. And I know all the uh, folks that are here with NL WIC um, were really interested in the information that he was talking about. But one of the um, areas, Janice, that he touched on that's untapped is the mature person um, who maybe is, you know, ready to retire, but is looking for some part-time work or still wants to be engaged. And, and maybe for some of what you're doing, um, as uh, Marteza said, perhaps there's a um, part-time opportunity for someone who who might uh, just be looking for something a little bit different in that second career type idea. Um, awesome. Great question. Uh, Carol, up to you and then Michelle. Hi, thank you. Uh, that was all very, very interesting. And of course, as Carol had spoke about, I'm a, I'm a broker, so I look at the economy and housing all the time. So I find all of this stuff extremely interesting. And I'm a little bit of a geek when it comes to the statistics, but you've already spoke to this a little bit. But one of the things that I wanted to ask you about in terms of the domestic economy, and it's very interesting that we've got some things working a little bit differently within this recession than we have in the past, which I did not know. Um, so that was very interesting. But I wonder if one of the mitigating factors within the economy, would these large scale natural resource projects be something that is sort of helping us in this situation that we're in? Because I can tell you that I, I speak to brokers from right across the country and some of these places like Saskatchewan and Alberta, their housing markets are um, not as slow because they have some of these larger projects that are happening. So I just wonder maybe if you could give your thoughts on um, large projects and what the implications of those are in this sort of a climate. And, and do, you, do you think that potentially you'll see more of an appetite um for these things to happen as sort of a counteract to some of the other things that are happening i'm just wondering if that's um another piece of the puzzle if that makes sense uh, so, uh, certainly in the uh, uh, coming of newcomers as a large corporation in the format of uh, people from germany because uh, these kind of uh, industry they will bring their own uh, labor force so they are not going to use our labor force. We don't know even they are going to even try to train our labor force because they are going to bring for as a project, put them here, assemble them working and then and then they leave. Certainly these kind of project at this level will bring people, will bring more people to the to the region. And it certainly affects the area that you are working at. And one thing right now they do not know and they are working on it, is that where to house these people that they just are coming by themselves. One industry will by itself will bring 20, near 2,500 people. Multiply 25 by three, the dimension of each family at minimum. So you are looking for housing for 7,500 people. Does Stephenville and the suburb area have this kind of thing? I don't think so. And we are talking about building, it's not going to be co coming by one night. So it has to be passage of the time, at least uh, with the Canadian system that they are building and with the kind of weather that we have probably one complete year uh, or at least a seasonal um, uh, with text in order to put uh, houses for all these people. So it certainly changed the dynamic of the housing industry and the upstream and downstream of that regarding of mortgage, regarding of, of uh, 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 broker dealer type of thing, definitely it will have a positive impact. And it, it will be a a for, a, for a short time, it will be a very, very short shock because you are bringing 2,500, all of a sudden you will increase the demand for housing for 2,500 people. We don't have this type of thing in, in this area. Then what happens? The current prices will go up. So we will be getting much more into trouble regarding of the current owner or the current uh, tenant, that type of thing, because they are willing to pay uh, anything that you just name it, whether 
it affects the other. We call it negative externality because my company, let's say I am bringing 2,500 people. I just need them to be sleep on the ceiling one for, for nine seconds. I am willing to whatever it takes to pay at least for a short while. So in the short time, we are going to see a, a, a very, very significant shock to the housing industry. But over time, it will be moderated once we have more uh, rooms and more apartments or, or more houses available. Awesome. Thank you so much. Excellent question, Carol. It makes me think of um, areas like Labrador West, right? When the mines are booming and the housing goes so high and then I'm just thinking of my daughters who are trying to get into their first home and then you have this, you know, a kind of increased artificial rate and then the mines drop and then housing changes and you're nodding. I know you and Margaret have lived through these ups and downs and whirlwinds. Um, so I think, you know, as, as Marteza, as you talked about the, the new people coming in, I can't help but think of those of us locals, so to speak, that are in the residence that maybe want to upgrade our home or maybe want to downsize our home as we age. And, and what is that going to do to the market? So it's 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 really going to have a long term effect, I think. Uh, Michelle, I'll go to you because I'm sure that you also with the housing thing have questions, but I imagine some of the other comments will uh, will uh, appeal to you as well. So if you'd like to open up, Michelle, you're next and then Andrew. Thank you so much, Carol. Good morning, everyone. My name is Michelle Abdullah. I'm the Community Connections Officer for Association for New Canadians in Cornerbrook. So even though like our offices in Cornerbrook, our region covers the western region of Newfoundland. So that is from anywhere from Rocky Harbor like until Port of Basque. So we have um, uh, eight satellite office. Our headquarters is in St. John's. So our office in Cornerbrook is the largest out of like all our satellite office. We have three in Labrador and the rest is in Newfoundland. So I would like to reply to uh, Janice Sriyan, like about like the jobs that are available uh, in Cornerbrook. We are trying to change our Facebook page that is ANC Cornerbrook Facebook page into a newspaper. Uh, so all the job uh, availabilities, uh, job vacancies, informative session like from our community partners, events, activities that we are organizing, everything like the newcomers will be able to access it like from our Facebook page. And we also have an internal software where like we um, directly let our like newcomer clients know about. So if there is any job like, um, that you would like to like us to um, advertise like to our uh, newcomers, uh, I have like left my, uh, I leave my contact information like on the chat and we are more than happy to have a chat with you and uh, discuss further like how we can make arrangements for it. Uh, Carol, uh, is it possible for me to share my screen? Sure. So uh, whenever we go um, and introduce ourselves, uh, we actually provide a single sheeter of the program. Um, we're not seeing his screen. I just wanted to let you know, I'm still seeing the same slide. Yeah. Thanks, Carol. Do you have the share option? Is it giving you an option, Michelle? I uh, know it, it's disabled. I can send you a PDF document after our meeting so you can share it with all uh, everyone. Okay. Yeah. I could do that. So, yeah, sure. So like what we're trying to do is there's a lot of like newcomers, like overqualified um, uh, people there. Are, like, they have like multi PhDs, they have like double masters and bachelor students. Uh, so once when they graduate like, from all the universities like, and also they move into Newfoundland and Labrador, we help them out like, in order to find a job related to their field. We have like a career division access department. It's in uh, St. John's. We are currently trying to fill a position here in Cornerbrook where like the newcomers, um, we will help the newcomers like to find a job related to their field here in the region. And the other thing like uh, the 
the first and foremost thing like a newcomer uh, would like to get like once when they move to uh, Canada, like anywhere like in Canada is to get their like permanent resident. Uh, since we are in the Atlantic province, so there is a um, uh, permanent resident pathways just like in the uh, Atlantic provinces, that is the Atlantic Immigration Program. And uh, ANC uh, is the settlement providers like for uh, in Newfoundland and Labrador. So my colleague, Damon Clark, he is the regional settlement coordinator. Once there is a newcomer like, who is like walking into our office and uh, wanted to apply for a permanent residence, if it is the Atlantic Immigration Program, the employer have to go through a series of steps like that is, um, they have to get a designation from the government and later they have to get an ICT training. So that is intercultural training from one of our staff and later to get an onboarding uh, package. So that is like also a one hour session like with one of our colleagues. And after that, they will be uh, designated with the government and we will provide like all the source of information like for the employers and employees. So if the, it is like of any of your interest and would like to know like more details of it, uh, I leave my contact details and we can fix up a meeting like to discuss further. Excellent. Thank you, Michelle. That's awesome to know. And I know, too, that your organization is looking at uh, developing a mentoring program to support newcomers in the workplace uh, once they're placed, which uh, Hillary or uh, Daphne and I are working with Hillary on the Atlantic Study and Stay. Uh, and I think the mentoring program is such a important piece to help newcomers stay connected uh, and feel supported. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Excellent, thank you. Uh, Andrew. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, I popped a message in the chat, but I just wanted to draw attention to it just in case you didn't notice. Um, my name is Andrew Hibbets, and I'm an Economic Development Officer for the West Coast with Horizon TNL, formerly known as Red A TNL. Um, and we are Newfoundland and Labrador's bilingual economic development organization. Um, if you are looking for um, job candidates to fill positions, um, we sometimes have a list and I was actually recently contacted um, by some of my coworkers on the East Coast um, and they have a list of candidates that were looking for employment. I need to touch base with them this week just to make sure they were in all placed. But um, regardless, we're continue continuously working with job seekers. So if you want to touch base with me anytime you have a position you're looking to fill, can't hurt uh, just to pop off an email to me and we can see if we got somebody that might fit what you're looking for. And if not, we can keep you on a database. And when somebody comes along that might uh, fit fit the criteria, then uh, we'll reach out and we can arrange an interview and all that great stuff. So I just wanted to put that out there and my emails in the chat as well. Excellent. Merci beaucoup, Andrew. Um, Andrew and I were talking recently and we're going to be having more conversations uh, in March um, for this, this community about the benefits of hiring bilingual uh, candidates as well. Um, and where that may, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, uh, Morteza has told us to look for new markets and find new strategies and perhaps, you know, the bilingual visitor is is a uh, potential market for you. So um, certainly uh, something we're going to explore a little bit further. Excellent. Thank you. Um, any other questions or comments of anyone that would like to uh, throw to our guest or to anyone else? Hi, uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's nice to see this uh, this great uh, seminar and and have an opportunity to hear from uh, you know people like uh, uh, Dr. Mortese. Um, yeah, uh, uh, the question that I have is um, as a business owner and and looking at expanding and perhaps making some uh, fairly significant uh, capital. Uh, expenditures um, that uh, interest rate is is a bit ominous and I'm wondering like what you know is there is there sort of a, a long-term uh, 
you know, strategy or outlook and, and how that is going to happen or like if, if that's going to uh, come back down again, because, it, you know, it, it does certainly make a, uh, a significant impact on, uh, on overall costs and, uh, uh, you know, depreciating assets and that. So just wondering what your thoughts are with the, you know, if there's something that we could expect to, to go back down to. Uh, I think I think you said it was around 2.44 percent, and right now it's, it's hovering around um, seven, close to seven. Just wondering what your thoughts were on that, Doctor. Uh, yes, uh, thank you. Uh, unfortunately, the horizon for 2023 is not sound promising. That is, we need to be careful about, um, and so we need to watch our 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 cost of our business. Basically, the way that Bank of Canada works is that they are looking at the overnight rate, they call it overnight rate, eight times per year. And on those times, depend on the functioning of the economy, they either increase the overnight rate or decrease or do not touch it. Uh, uh, one of the first time, as I mentioned in my talk, were, uh, is tomorrow. It is rumored that in 2024, by mid-2024, they are anticipated to come back to the normal way. But it's, it's not something in a one day or two day. It has to be done. We, we experienced it before. We came from uh, 5.75 in 1997 down to down to 2.25 before uh, 2020, it's around 2018, 2019. We can do it, but there are some things that is not in hands of Canada. Unfortunately, our economy is a small economy relative to the size of the economy in the global market. Unfortunately, whatever happens in the global market will affect us. And to, to the answer to your question, uh, I do not see any declining in 2003 at least. I am hoping that it will hovering around 6.45. I mean, they may come down a little bit, but uh, it's not gonna be back by 2.45 that we had in 2022, at the beginning of 2022. So that means we have to be very, very careful about uh, when, when we are gonna borrow, uh, money, or if we are going to borrow, uh, we are looking at what what kind of percentage. If you go to the site of Bank of Canada, if you Google it, and then just type type in a schedule Bank of Canada a schedule for interest rate, they all give you the eight times in 2022 when we are going to, they are going to announce it. 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. All those days, they will announce a revised rate. First, we have to be uh, pray, we have to be cross finger or whatever uh, to uh, see that uh, event happening in between Russia and Ukraine will be ended peacefully, not more than this anymore. And then normally it comes back. If there is not other part of the world just doing something else right now. Always tension between Chinese government and Taiwanese government, always the case. Um, so they find a place to to make their uh, 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 working factories, unfortunately, uh, keep going. This is the this is the population. This is the government in the rest of the world have to be very really smart. But so the answer. Thank you, to the question. Yeah. Thanks. I don't know. I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm looking, looking, at, looking this at this rate, thinking, rate, thinking uh, uh, expand, expand markets, markets, find new markets, buy. invest, but it's going to cost you a fortune to borrow. It's 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 a tough rate. It's it's it, you want to survive, so you want to expand, you want to grow, and yet the cost of doing that is also going to be a challenge. Yeah, it's a great question. Great question right? Right? I I just wonder if I could make a comment to this as well, because I think to the point of the mitigating factor of you know, you, you sort of want to, I guess, do up a business case for all these things because you wouldn't want to miss out on potential growth if there's a large expansion to your market as a result of, say, 2,500 people moving 
in, um, I guess you kind of got to look at it all in relation to your business. I think if I could just make that comment, because you, you may, you may create space, uh, for somebody else potentially, I guess, or, and, and your, your business could grow larger than what you may pay out in interest to create that growth. So I, I think for each, each one of our businesses, that's something we probably all got to look at the big picture and not just based on the interest rates. Um, mm-hmm. and, and, mm-hmm. and I just speak to that because I know my, our agents face that a lot within the market is now the right time to buy. But to the professor's point, we could potentially get into a time when the value of all of our, of all of our real estate goes up considerably. Um, and we do have a, a real estate market that where the values do always go up. So it's only one piece of the picture, I guess. I would just want to add to that if I could. Yeah, absolutely. Excellent. Carol, thank you. And if I may, I didn't, I didn't raise my hand, but I don't, I don't see anybody. If I may. Yeah, go ahead, Daphne. <laughs> thank you. I just joined the uh, Newfoundland Credit, um, Newfoundland Labrador Credit Union as a commercial d- business advisor and working with small businesses. I think the important thing for small businesses to really take to take from this is perhaps it's time to really reevaluate and maybe pivot and really look at your expenses as well and your operating costs. And I know many doesn't sometimes there's not much room, but it's it's an opportunity also to to your point, Carol, to have a business plan and you know and have look outside the box and definitely speak to um, to the experts out there uh, because there is solutions. I know it's going to be a little bit of a tough time we're going through, but. Cash flow is important to, for business to survive and really understanding how to manage uh, the cost of, of lending and the cost of borrowing is really important. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, reach out to reach out to the um, even myself. I'm just uh, my background and it will take me five time. I'll talk about it, but reach out to the experts out there and like credit union is here to work with the community. Um, I think that maybe from what I'm hearing from Dr. Mateza, Perhaps it's a it's a, not, it's a short term, maybe maybe less than a year, a short term uh, issue that we need to really change and really hunker down and tighten our belts, and then plan for 2024, and really plan for opportunities. Um, there's always an opportunity in adverse in in you know, in adversity. So that's my advice. Don't don't get discouraged. You know, it's it's scary. It is scary, very mm-hmm. very much so. But uh, there's always um there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, absolutely. And I think I think one thing I know my personal perspective over the last probably five years, six years is there's always going to be something, whether it's Brexit, Greece's economy, the war, a pandemic, like we we can say, okay, all these factors come to play. The war ends peacefully. You know, we're all healthy again, all of those things. But there's going to be something else. I don't know. I don't know what it's going to be, but there's going to be something else. (laughs) So um, I think there's there's always, you know, you do have to kind of balance that risk, I guess. And, and you know, I think the growth thing is a is a tough thing that I know for me as an individual owner, you know, sole proprietor, it's that capacity. And I imagine for for many people, um, you know, it, it falls into do we have the capacity to meet that demand? So if we explore these markets, if we do well on the social media, if we expand and expand and then all of a sudden, do we have actually that uh, that capacity to to deliver? So that's a bit of a tough one um, as well. Um, I'm seeing lots of uh, great comments and people uh, sharing information, and I really really appreciate that. Um, and I again want to thank you, Marteza, for a, a wonderful chat. Um, and I really appreciate the informality of it that you've done. And and we haven't been in a lecture; we've just been having a discussion, which I think is really really great. Um, looking at the time, I do want to give an opportunity for uh, folks to tell us a little bit more about who you are, um, those that haven't had a, a chance to speak just yet. Um, and I know that we've had some people drop off. So um, first off, before I get into all of that, I want to thank Ray and Sherry from uh, the Greater Cornerbrook Board of Trade who have sponsored our coffee break this month and actually put forward this topic. Um, And I think Ray, you had conversations with folks and Sherry came to me and said, uh, our board's interested in talking about uh, the economy. And I'm like, okay, so let's see, let's make it happen. Um, So thank you for not only sponsoring, but for giving the suggestion and and welcoming folks here. 
We have a number of folks here from NL WIC, and so that's our Newfoundland Labrador uh, Workforce Innovation Center. Um, so Sharon, uh, I'm wondering if you just want to say a quick blurb on who your folks are. You've got uh, several of your teammates here with you today. Yes, hi, thanks, Carol. No, this is great, actually. Thank you very much for the opportunity. It's a very important discussion. Uh, for those who aren't familiar with the Newfoundland Labrador Workforce Innovation Center, or NLWIC, as we talk, we say, uh, we were created by the provincial government in 2017, and the focus was, our mandate at that time, was to, to lead, I guess, and to provide a coordinated central point of access to engage all the labour market stakeholders uh, about labour market challenges and opportunities and solutions and best practices. And one that we're hearing about today, obviously, is the you know growth and in preparing for growth, but labour shortages in, in, in light of that. So uh, one of the, uh, what we our mandate, as I just said, is that, but we, we very much focus on testing and sharing um, models of innovation in workforce development that will have a positive impact on employment, employability, and entrepreneurship. So that's really, really important, but particularly for underrepresented groups. So I'll say one thing. I think one of the labor market strategies that uh, we we promote uh, and we test models around is how do we increase the participation rate of underrepresented groups? And there's no question that newcomers are one of those or migrants, if you want to say that. But, uh, but and I think there was a mention of uh, approaching Halapu, which I think is an excellent idea. Indigenous is another group, youth, uh, women, persons with disabilities, uh, you know, uh, older workers. And you mentioned that, Carol, I'm really glad. I think it was Carol that was really good because there's really good work that we've done in that area. Um, and person and even income support clients and I'm delighted to see that government are doing a three year pilot to see how that they can really engage those individuals. So all I'm saying is that I think we, we should think about uh, maybe as businesses and as NLWIC, how do we support employers and how do employers, I guess, get ready to increase their diversity and inclusion when it comes to human resource strategies. And I think, I'm, and I, but I will say that I recognize and we hear it all the time that small businesses are really strapped for resources. So I get that. And we're trying to think about are there models out there that we could share with employers and encourage more support so that they can share maybe human resources or whatever. Um, so I just wanted to say that. I think that's a really important strategy and, and one that we hope that that would be encouraged. We're also just looking at a couple of models now. I'm not sure where we're gonna go with it, but it's really interesting. It's another way to address labor shortages. And that is what's called either employer sharing of part-time employees. Maybe there are employees that are seasonal or part-time, but can't kind of, for whatever reason, they're not full-time. So in Nova Scotia, they call it cluster employment, and that's been a tested model there. And so we're learning a bit more about that. And they're also doing it in Quebec. So I just wanted to say that. Um, I will say, and I, I'll, uh, I don't want to put Suzanne on the spot, but I think Suzanne, you're still on there. We do have research. So we do research about models, about how to attach people to the workforce. But we also have some other tools in our toolkit. Uh, and like the regional workforce development committees, uh, we have 10 right across the province whose sole focus is workforce development. How do we understand the issues in a systematic way with a standing committee and invited guests to, how do we understand what the issues are facing uh, employers and, 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 and also underrepresented groups who, who need to be attached to the workforce? So that's one of the things we do in a very systematic way. Suzanne, I don't know if you want to speak to that, but it's pretty exciting, I think, what's happening in that area. And it's an opportunity. So thank you, Carol, for that opportunity. Uh, because, you know, we're pretty excited about those things. We will be uh, establishing an economic immigration ideas lab in the near future or in the coming uh, months. So stay tuned for that. And that hopefully will look at innovative models about recruitment and retention. But over to you, Suzanne, because you're, you know, you are the program lead and project lead with uh, Melissa, who's our project coordinator, supported by NLWIC. So thanks, Carol, for that. Thank you, Sharon. Yeah, th thanks, Sharon. Uh, you know, you, you summed it up pretty good there. Um, you know, we've been pretty fortunate in the last year. We've rolled out the, the 10 regional workforce development committees. And of course, with that, we've built a great team around us. Uh, Melissa Fever, Fever as our project coordinator. And uh, we have uh, this initiative is wrapped up in a research project with the Future Skills Centers as, as well about testing an innovative workforce development model for Newfoundland and Labrador. 
So basically we bring, um, and we work, of course, this is mandated through IPGS. So we work quite closely with them on the operations and setup and funding and supports to make this happen. Uh, you know, the committees, the standing committees are six government departments, federal and provincial, uh, IET, IPGS, uh, FFA, uh, ACOA, Service Canada, and College of the North Atlantic. Uh, we come together and we've developed a new action planning framework where we'll take the committees through and we engage with invited guests to talk about what are the workforce challenges and issues that need to be addressed in the region and how can we look at action plans to address those issues. Um, to date, 20 plans have been developed and uh, we're actually looking at start, starting to roll out with some financial support from government to be able to roll out those plans, which is really exciting. And we're now rolling out our second, uh, uh, actually we started in December, uh, round two of the committee meetings. Uh, just really good information on our website uh, and on WIC.ca. Uh, about the committees, about our uh, labor market information that we, as a part of the committee structure that we've prepared, you can check that out. Some of that is being updated as well, of course, because Stats Can Data um, is, has been updated. Anyway, great initiative. If anybody wants more information, you can connect with me at any time. My contact information, I'll put in the chat there now. Um, and if anybody's got any questions, shoot away. I would expect that Janice will be on your doorstep. I, I can hear the wheels turning in her head now. <laughs> oh, you're good, Carol. You're good. <laughs> um, I'd like to give an opportunity for a couple of the entrepreneurs to say hello and, and share a little bit about your business. So, uh, Peter, do you want to say hello? And then maybe Liz. Yep, sure. Um, can you hear me fine? Yep. Okay. My uh, name's Peter Butt. I operate two home-based businesses out of the Cornerbrook Bay of Islands, I guess, Western Newfoundland area. Uh, one is Western Audio Solutions, uh, supply DJ services, as well as uh, sound production for music and festivals. And I think it might have been that. Ray knows me a little bit from uh, some of his events I've done at his place. And the other is Western Pool and Spa, and that is basically doing pool installations, repairs, hot tubs, and just getting into the sales of those items. Um, nice to meet everyone here, and some of my concerns as a small home-based business is wanting to grow into placing a, a shingle above a, uh, um, a a business outside and hiring on staff. Um, have some apprehensions around that because you also hear all of the horror stories, but uh, getting the appropriate staff and maintaining them, and of course with the economy and the businesses I'm into is um, you need some disposable income in order to. Uh, to do those things, right? Buy pool, hot tubs, um, those types of things. So with the economy turning, I do have some apprehension of going down that route with a um, supposedly oncoming recession. So just kind of uh, growing slowly and uh, nice to know that there probably are some opportunities through the new Canadians or other uh, groups where I can get some staffing. Uh, it will be on a short-term basis from time to time, but uh, yeah. Nice to meet everyone here and, and hopefully uh, continue networking as we move forward. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today. Liz, if you're there, do you want to say a few words? Hello. Yes, I'm here. Perfect. <laughs> um, so I'm Liz Condon. I own Sea Salt and Twig and we have well crafted skincare. We also do have some jewelry, uh, but our focus this year is more so on the skincare side of it, our apothecary. And part of our narrative this year is um, changing um, the narrative uh, from aging is undesirable to aging is graceful and really focusing on creating space for women to slow down, take a break, step back from, you know, this push and pull of, you know, we have to be um, young and 22 forever, but yet we also have to be 
grown up adults and, you know, be the matriarch as well. So we're, we're using our products to, to give women time and space in their day to just slow down, turn inward and, um, accept and a, like age gracefully. So. Awesome. Yeah. I think, I think as more and more tragedies happen around the world, I'm, I'm certainly embracing the fact that it's a blessing to age. Um, cause there's so many that haven't had the opportunity. Absolutely. I love, I love that. It's like we're we we've spent some time doing some branding in the last few weeks. And one of the things that came up, which I, it just kind of really hit hit hard to me is I'm I'm going to be 40 in a couple of months was, you know, if we're all supposed to stay young forever, then who's left to guide us? Who's left to impart wisdom and knowledge and teach the young um, how, you know, how to live life? Um, so it's, um, it's, yeah, it's, it's been an interesting, uh, journey this year. Awesome. Excellent. Thank you. And I'm sure the growth conversation was something you were following because you've just had exponential growth in the last number of years and you hit that, you were at that tipping point of, can I hire, can I afford, can I grow? So I'm sure that was kind of giving you some flashbacks there, Liz. <laughs> it was, it was really interesting because we have officially hired our first employee, um, so it's, uh, it's been an interesting and terrifying, um, experience the last few weeks getting that all, uh, worked out. Um, so, but it's really interesting to listen to and, and understand, like, I understand like the difficulties, especially as a really small business. It's, you know, for me, it's, uh, it's, what am I giving up this year? What am I sacrificing in order to be able to, you know, provide an income for someone else, but allow my business to grow, um, certain financial things are just not an option for me. Um, uh, biz, um, fundings and stuff are just not available to me right now. So I really have to, you know, pick and choose what aspects I'm going to um, allow for myself and what I'm going to sacrifice on in order to be able to provide. Because uh, it hire, hiring, I think for me, I've, I've found it's been it's the most expensive part of operating so far. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm sure Ray's shaking his head. He knows that he knows that <laughs> struggle with the multiple businesses that he's he's had. Um, Margaret, would you like to say a few words and then Abayomi? Sure. Thank you. You can hear me. <laughs> I was a little concerned with my sound earlier. Um, first of all, great, great uh, coffee break. Uh, lots of very in- useful and great insights and information. Um, I agree with Carol, Carol Anstey and her thoughts on, you know, um, I'm a real estate broker as well. I own River Mountain Realty, which I should have said first. And I'm in the process of trying to grow my business as well and looking at the opportunities out there rather than being discouraged. It's easy to get discouraged in in this economic state we're in right now. Mm -hmm. And the information that uh, Dr. Mortessa shared, um, you know, certainly doesn't give a whole lot of hope for something happening or changing in the immediate future. But we all we, we have to continue to look at the, the opportunities, I think, that are out there more so than being discouraged. And if there are ways to grow your business plan and to grow your business, to to reach out to all of these people, these support networks that are there. And um, yeah, all everybody on here has has something to offer. So it's uh, it's great. And I look forward to mm-hmm. um, finding more opportunities in 2023 which hopefully by the time we get to the to the better inflation rates and all that in 2024 we'll be in a better position so yeah it's great thank you very much excellent thank you have you on me yeah thank you very much i've been having some hitches with the network but thank god i'm able to be stable here now uh good insights nice information had so far uh, I'm an entrepreneur back home in my country, and uh, I've been trying to see how I could integrate that into Newfoundland here, which mm-hmm. has been a basic challenge, you know, as a, an immigrant, because I noticed some of the rules and laws are centered around um, being a PR holder or a citizen. So mm-hmm. and, uh, there's need to get a network where you can 
synergize and work together. Even as a sole proprietor, doing small scale business is not that too easy. But if you have people to complement ideas, you share positions, you share views, you share expertise and get to the desired goal. I think there should be more way to influence the government to be able to see to to this so that we can have uh, an easy entry into the business world so that to encourage and enhance the socio-economic and technological development of Newfoundland. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Um, Samantha has put a plug in and that was uh, is certainly on my uh, presentation, but Samantha, if uh, if you want to add to it, we are um, doing an in-person event. We're going to shift from virtual. So Samantha, if you want to talk, let folks know who you are and a little bit more about our event. Absolutely. Um, so I'm Samantha O'Brien. I'm actually the manager of commercial services here at Atlantic Edge Credit Union, formerly Eagle River and Leading Edge Credit Union. Um, I say it was in the beginning of the once you started these, Carol, I kind of started joining and truly seeing the value of that coming together as an entrepreneur small business network really benefits everybody. Um, so as part of the credit union difference and all that good stuff, uh, part of Winter Carnival, we were actually hosting a actual meet and greet for small businesses, which is unheard of these days, especially because of 2020. Mm -hmm. um, dare we speak of. So we are asking any businesses, you don't have to be members, you don't have to be anything to do with the credit union. It's just purely a chance for us to get out and market with each other, network with each other, and really get to form that connection again. Um, we do have catering from Cafe 59. Um, which I'm so excited for. <laughs> so, you know, it's a great opportunity and we hope to see as many of you guys there as possible. It is from 1130 to 1 at Passive Eden Place on February 16th. Yep. Come on out and have some winter fun. Absolutely. Awesome. Uh, before I wrap up, Richard, you're joining from the Great Northern Peninsula. Do you have your uh, partners in crime with you as well? If you want to let folks know who you are. Good day. No, it's uh, it's just me today. Okay. Um, I guess for those who are having problems with the interest rates, as a nonprofit organization, we kind of are enjoying it in a sad way because the increase in interest rates means an increase in revenues for us and makes it a little easier for us to to operate. But well, we do see the pain in our clients, and we have had to make uh, some adjustments for some clients in order to ensure they're able to stay in business. And uh, being a community-based organization, we have that flexibility, which uh, clients would not receive from a charter bank. I'm not going to comment on the credit union. They might do something somewhere. A charter bank definitely wouldn't. Yeah, so for those that don't know, Richard's with the CBDC NORTIP, so the um, Community Development Organization. I don't know if anyone got any question for me in that regard. It's been a very interesting conversation, and I've really enjoyed uh, the information that we received. Excellent, thank you, and I'm so glad you could join. Um, so I'm looking at the time. I'm going to start our wrap up here. So as Samantha mentioned, we are doing we are co-hosting an in-person event uh, in February. So I'm not going to be offering a virtual coffee break in February. Uh, so my apologies to those outside the region. Um, I know you're not able to drive across the island, for instance, to uh, grab a coffee, Daphna. But um, we'll see you again in March. Um, and so in uh, March Horizon, Andrew, who just dropped off, is uh, sponsoring our March coffee break. April, Scotiabank has stepped up to be our uh, sponsor. And Edwina was on earlier from Avail HR, and she's going to be uh, sponsoring our May coffee break. Um, I want to send a huge thank you to Ray and Sherry again from the Cornerbrook, uh, Greater Cornerbrook Board of Trade uh, for sponsoring today and for bringing forth a suggestion. And uh, Dr. Morteza, 
Fantastic. Thank you so much for the information that you shared, uh, your willingness to answer all of the questions and the comments, and uh, just really, really uh, grateful for your presence today. So thank you. Thank you for so folks, I'll uh, thank you again. Uh, as our entrepreneur community, uh, thank you so much for coming together, and I wish you all a fantastic day. Thank you. Nice seeing everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. everyone. Yep. Thanks.